Hi, I'm Guy Lawrence and you are listening to the Guy Lawrence podcast. If you're enjoying this content and you want to find out more and join me and come further down the rabbit hole, make sure you head back to guylawrence.com.au. Awesome guys, enjoy the show. Barry, welcome to the podcast. Well, thanks for having me, Guy. I'm excited to be here with you. You're very welcome. Now, I ask everybody on the show, if a complete stranger stopped you on the street and asked you what you did for a living, what would you say? Well, I, I would say I'm a musetarian. So that's someone who dedicates their life to utilizing music to help others. I made the word up myself uh, because there wasn't really anything accurate that I felt describe what I was doing because I was somewhere in between a sound healer and a musician and producer. And so I came up with that term. And really, my, my goal is to bring awareness to the fact that there is more to music than just art and entertainment, and that music, sound, and vibration are uh, tools that we can use for a vehicle for healing and transformation. Yeah. And really, you know, that's my big message. That's amazing. Do, were you always fascinated with sound, vibration, and healing, or was that a kind of been a more of a recent journey like how did it work like were you always into music like did you pick up a guitar when you were like three years old or something or uh, no you know it's, it's interesting I think I always was interested in sound um, and I, I tell a story in, in my book that I remember kind of being between the ages of two and three and sitting at a piano with my mom and we had a piano in our house that was given to us and my mom played by ear you know so she would um, you know, play notes on the piano and kind of sing along with it. And I remember her singing Yellow Bird by Harry Belafonte and that each note had matched the note that she was singing. And later on, I obviously I knew that that's what we call resonance, right? When something matches uh, or we feel a resonance with something, it's, it's a matching of or a, a synchronicity to that specific note. But I remember also the notes kind of hanging in the air, you know, when she would play the notes and there was like a fascination with how music filled up, you know, filled up a room and the space, you know, between those notes, which would later on in my life, as you know, become a big part of the work that I do is not just about, you know, the notes that we play, but the space between the notes are a lot of time and where people are having the transformational and healing experiences. But, you know, initially I first started playing an instrument uh, I was about probably about 12 years old when I started playing guitar um, after a run in playing drums, uh, which did not go over real well. <laughs> I grew up in New York City uh, in, a, in a complex with, you know, 35 stories yeah, with right. big apartments. And my neighbors weren't really happy with me banging on drums. So uh, we decided to trade them in and I got a guitar. And uh, that really opened things up for me. You know, as soon as I was learning chords, for me, I was always kind of writing. Um, as soon as I was able to put a couple of chords together, I was writing songs. Right. So uh, I was never the guy at the party that knew how to play, you know, Stairway to Heaven or, uh, you know, <laughs> all those songs that everybody else knew. I, can only, I really only could play my own songs. Yeah. Um, so, um, and that later, you know, became, went on from, to me um, doing it for a living. You know, I'm giving you the shortcut. Uh, and I became a music producer um, in New York City. And, you know, I really just started to kind of get burnt out on the music industry because I was creating, you know, a five minute pop song in a hundred hours. And it became, you know, a real job. And that's kind of when the healing aspects of music started introducing themselves in my life I, I really decided that I wanted to go back and reconnect you know with that 12 year old kid who was sitting on his the edge of his bed and you know just playing guitar and that love of being able to create a song out of nothing you know yeah so right. um yeah so I started taking these journeys with music you know and um I, I did a search in uh at the time and found out that music at about 60 beats per minute is targeting our heart at a relaxed state. So I started taking these hour long journeys at 60 beats per minute, really for my own healing purpose to kind of let go of anxiety and stress. And I was hoping to come back into my own heart. 
And um, those pieces later on became my series Ambiology, which is still being used, you know, 20, almost 20 years later now, about 18 years since I, I put it out, or 17 mm -hmm. years. And, um, you know, we just started getting testimonials from people. They were using them for, um, for sleeping challenges. They were using them in a dentist's office. They were using them when their dad passed over. And that started really piquing my curiosity. It's like something that I'm doing here is creating a space, you know, to assist other people in a multitude of things. And I began to get more into research and that led to writing my book, which is um, all about that. Totally. You know, this, I find these, these changes in direction in our lives that open, to our, open up to us really fascinating. And I don't know what it was like for you, Barry, but at first I, I kind of got to a place where I was achieving where I thought this was going to make me happy. And yet when I, was, when I got there, there was a lot of unhappiness and stress and, and resistance. But I was struggling. I was resisting the change at first. Was that the same for you? When, when you yes. were producing music? Yeah, very, very similar. I mean, I was going uh, through opening up my spiritual path at the time. And, you know, what I was doing was I was, I was compartmentalizing what my music was. You know, so I was like, okay, well, this is my pop music that I'm producing. And this is my healing music. Okay. Right? And um, as they say, you can't serve two masters. You know, so I, I was very resistant um, at first to letting go of that. And I, and I actually didn't, to be honest with you, because I, I still love that aspect of producing pop music and songs. But I did transition into tearing that wall down and saying, well, you know what? The realization I got was it's all spiritual. You know, it's based on what I put into it. You know, and when I'm putting my intention into that, right, and I'm making it spiritual i'm making it um and creating that space where it's coming through me where i'm not the only um, i'm not the only ingredient in the recipe for creation that i'm bringing another source in whether you call it god or the universe or anything else and when i took that that um intention and i started creating a reality with it where i would set space before i was doing my pop songs with artists you know or i would set space before i was working with new artists that um that everything that i create is sacred you know and that tearing down that wall of wow it's this is this kind of music and this is this kind of music and this is spiritual and this is pop you know that went out the window and that's really when when things began to expand you know and um, my reach of affecting people and working with you know some of the people that i'm working with started to align because I think that, you know, one of the main purposes of what I'm here to do um, is to be a bridge, you know, and, yeah. and um, to assist people in taking their message from one space to another. And, um, you know, that's been a powerful, powerful part of my work in the last five to 10 years is, is collaborating with new thought and spiritual leaders in the world that have a vital message that they want to share it and they understand that music sound and vibration are going to magnify that you know they're not going to be the people that you hear using stock music you know they understand um, and they respect that they want to know the person's energy that you know that's creating the music and that's that's joining with their messages and I, I can vouch for that. It's incredible. Like I've been at different retreats and, and I, like, like I was saying off air before, I've been listening to your music for a, a fair number of years now, Barry, as well. And when you go into this space, it can, for me, it can evoke so much emotion in different ways and even releases, which I'd never even experienced before. Like how does that, how does that work? Like what's the science behind it? What's going on? Well, you know, I think, Guy, that there is a, again, there's a bridge, you know, between it's not just what the science of what's going on there. It's really where science and spirituality interact, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, you know, the science behind some of what I do is utilizing exactly what I told you my experience was. So I love targeting the heart rate uh, because when we can slow our heart rate down or for some people might be speeding it up. But when we can target the heart at a relaxed state, which is for most people between 
60 and 70 beats per minute, you know, it, we come to a place where the music moving slower and there's a lot more flow to it. I'm not using as much melody, there are longer tones that are going on, which give the people the space to have an experience. And there's like an ebb and flow to it that allows people to just, really when you hear it, it's just kind of like going, right? You just kind of surrender. And that tempo allows you to really just start kind of matching that ebb and flow. And before you know it, your heart's relaxing. Yeah. And what's going on with that is, you know, uh, is there's a heart brain connection. You know, so as your heart is moving to a more coherent state, right, and you're moving to these elevated emotional states, right, because when you start tapping back into your heart again, you start to realize, wow, I have my own unique vibration that's going on here. And you tap into gratitude and kindness and, you know, and patience and compassion, right? All of these things that I, I feel are our true nature that we come back home to, you know, in the heart. But what happens is when you're moving into those more coherent states, the brain is working with you. You know, your, your brain can't be in high beta and your heart slowing down and being in that relaxed state. So you start to move from that high beta state and you start to move more into alpha, right? And your brain waves are slowing down. There's this conversation going on and this intelligence that's happening that is really bridging right? Your heart and brain coherence. And that's where the powerful um, transformations happen in your meditations when you can bridge those two things and you move out of mind chatter, right? And you're yeah. just moving, beautiful heart space where you're like, wow, where, where did I just go, you know, for the last half an hour? So, you know, that's the science behind it. But really, I think the, the, what, what really needs to happen and a, a lot of it was where it, it's ignored as well is, you have to you have to have a composition that you're listening to that resonates with you you know so if i put that same science behind it and 60 beats per minute but i'm playing something very dissonant um to you that doesn't doesn't feel good you know uh, you're never gonna have that space to go where you're going with it so i also have to be an open vessel to bring something through that I love, like I have to have a healing process with it first. And that's where the spiritual aspects come into play is I have to have a spiritual experience while I'm composing the music in order for you to. That's, that is my belief, you know? And if I'm composing the music first for myself and my own healing process, then it's gonna resonate with someone out there who's looking for a similar healing process to occur. That doesn't mean that it's going to happen for everybody, but I'm a strong believer that part of the musical recipe that has to happen is, and um, it is a recipe and it's similar to food, you know, that you can love broccoli, you know, but if you're allergic to it, it's not going to have a great effect with you, you know? So it's the same thing with music. You can, you can love something, but it might not have a great effect with you, you know, or the other way around, you know, you can, you can really have the intention for something to work that has that technology in it, but it doesn't have music that resonates with you. Yeah. So I believe it all goes in and the primary ingredients are the intention um, for healing to occur within it. And also, you know, putting those elevated emotions in, you know, into these pieces, you know, I want to be in a space of gratitude. I want to be in a space of compassion when I'm composing you know, or else people are not going to have that journey. So again, it's, it's that spiritual and science interweaving together to, to allow people to have their own experience. It, may, it makes complete sense, complete sense. And I do wonder as well about if we, if we took that intent into all our creations of everything that we want to do, you know, like you said, for your own experience, your own journey first, how, do, how do you then go about composing something like that? Do you, do you just, does it come like quickly or do you, do you meditate for a while first or how do you sort of get in the, the zone to let, to let it all come through you? Yeah. I mean, for me, it's a, it's a process. It, I, I, the best analogy for me is comparing it to a painter, right? Except that I paint with sound, right? So yeah, you want to be in a great space before you, um, before you start, before you even put your brush on the canvas, right? But 
sometimes there's a transition period where you're going from your you know stressful life and then you're going into into the music so it's the same thing you know i like to be in a space where i'm open to transition and i'm open to release my busy day and i start with an intention but just like paint you know you start with a color right and for me that's sound it's it's playing around with sound and different notes and then all of a sudden you know that music becomes the meditation for me you know i usually don't have to meditate you know before i go into you know composing because the composing is the meditative meditation, process right you know that's where i go into the zone and like you know my wife can knock on the door three hours later and i'm like what time is it you know it's like you know started out at six o'clock and now it's 11 o'clock at night and you know but it, again guy it's very cool because it's like you know the layers of painting you know where i can even show you you know it's like if you hit a note you know uh let's see here i thought i had a note <laughs> let's see here bear with me for a second that's I cool thought I, had my, I thought i had my keyboard on so now i have to reach to my um my it's glasses. a great setup there oh thank you so yeah here we go So if we're starting out with a note, you know, can you hear that all right? Yeah. yeah. So that might be just my bass, my bass note frequency, you know, and I might have that going throughout, you know, throughout the piece as an underlying, I like to have an underlying grounding for people. So I'll use a low frequency like that to really just kind of keep going, keep the person grounded, even though they might be having an ethereal experience. You know, I still kind of want to keep them in a state where they're present, you know, so uh, that's part of it. And then, you know, you might add a layer onto that or a harmonic. And then possibly another. But just like paints, sometimes you get a wrong color in there. But then, uh, you know, hitting a chordal, a chordal pattern. That's how it kind of develops, you know, and then I might use that for a layer and then go back and find another sound or another color. Got it. And that's, a, you know, that's how it kind of starts. But, but what I find fascinating, Barry, is just sitting here, each note that each note or sound that you brought in was having a different response to me emotionally while I was trying to just listen intently and tune in. Yeah, and, and that's really what it is. You know, I like to introduce things slowly and build a theme. Yeah. Um, for it says, you know, just like a painting, you know, you start out and it's becoming something. And then sometimes like I hit that bad note, you know, that wasn't a bad note, but it just, it kind of was a, the filter reacting to the notes and I didn't realize it was gonna happen. And sometimes you have a layer that's like, hmm, that's not gonna work. Let me try another color you know, over yeah. that. Yeah. And, and you keep blending until you kind of feel this dance going on. And when it's affecting me, you know, when I'm listening to it and, and I'm, I'm saying, wow, that feels, I don't know, something in that combination there, you know, um, that was really cool. And for, and for me also, um, because I'm not playing it based on reading musical notes, right? I'm basing it on, intuition and what's kind of coming through um, that when I add those additional layers on, I don't really know exactly what chords are coming at me. So I can't be in my thinking mind. And, you know, so if I'm adding an overlay, you know, I have to take chances and I have to be in the unknown, right? Because I'm not sure exactly what I played on that last take. You know, I'm not, I'm not watching it to see. So, 
I'm adding on textural layers and sometimes they don't work, but when they do and you tap into something, wow, that's, that was really cool. I don't know what that harmonic was, but something in me, like you were saying, something felt like it got released in that. Yeah. You know, um, and it's that's such, the fun part. You have to have uh, fun with it. It's amazing. And it's such a great metaphor for life, what you just said right there, because we're constantly trying to think with the analytical mind and think our problems through and deconstruct stuff. And sometimes if we allow ourselves to get into that feeling space, and that's what I found over the years, which was my biggest aha moment, and trust those feelings and sit in the com discomfort of the unknown sometimes without trying to control anything and see where it leads you. Right. Absolutely. And yeah, and I, yeah. I think that as... Um, I, I got to a point in my process when this was all starting with, I said, I'm not really composing music anymore, you know, and, and I don't mean this to sound funny, but I'm decomposing, right? Okay. With the music, not like physically, my body's not decomposing, right? But I am coming to that place where I'm not thinking, you know, I'm not thinking about the compositional process. I'm thinking about how I can become lighter, how I can decompose, how I can connect with something that is larger than myself. And for people to be able to have that experience with my music is the greatest gift. Because even when I was doing pop music and just doing pop, my goal was always to be able to take people on a journey. If I'm not taking people on a journey with my music, then to me, I haven't succeeded. And yeah. So whatever I do, I want to take people on a journey with it. And I think it's the same for all of us, right? When you go to a movie, you know, when you read a book, right? Anything that's, you know, you have an intention that you want it to be a powerful experience and you want to take a journey with it. You want to get out of that thinking mind. We're in our minds so much, right? It's our heart that we have to connect to more, more so. And I think that's one of, you know, the bigger challenges where we are in our society now is people think that they have to be more mindful, you know, and I say we have to be more heartful. Yeah. You know, we have enough time, we're spending enough time online, right? We're spending enough time in our businesses. You know, we need to come back into, uh, you know, what I call our inner symphony, you know, which is this powerful music that we have going on within us, you know, our heartbeat, our breath. You know, when you take a deep breath in and you're, putting your hands on your heart and you're releasing a sigh out what's going on in your physical body just from connecting to the sound your own sounds you know and when we start to realize that music and sound and vibration are a language that is constantly speaking to us right it's all about are you ready to listen hmm. and listening is where our heart takes over. When you listen to your heart, you're not listening to, you know, weighing out the decision-making process, which is important that your brain goes through. You, you're listening to your intuition and you're listening to your gut feelings of what feels right to you. And when you can do that and come just home, you know, come home to the sounds of your heart and your breath. Um, and I, I call this the, um, the heart song breathing process is something that I created for this, that you're just taking a breath in through your heart, right? You're taking, and then you're breathing out. So maybe if you, let's do it together, actually. So okay. it's a three breath process where you're placing your hands on your heart, right? And then you're visualizing or you're allowing your breath to move through the bottom of your feet, right? And up through your heart, and then you're releasing it. So that's the first breath. Bring that breath in through the bottom of your feet. Bring it through your heart and then release it. Right? And that breath, you know, is in your lower chakras, right? So it's all about bringing in the energy of knowing that you're safe, that you're supported, supported that you're nurtured in your life. And then the next breath is taking a breath in and you're, you're bringing it in through the top of your head. Right, so you're bringing that breath through the upper three chakras, your crown, your third eye, and your throat. And let's just take that breath and bring it into the top of the head. And then releasing that through the heart. And that's all about surrendering, right? So that's all about releasing your time constraints, right? When pressure starts to come down on you 
and we start to think about time, right? So I always think about the, mm -hmm. the breath below is the mother. Those are a lot of times we're connected to our money issues there, right? So when we lease our money issues and we know we're supported, we're taken care of, that opens up our lower three chakras. When we're opening up the top of our head, it's those time issues, right? So most of the time people either have time or time or money, we relate them together. So when you can release the pressure of things coming down to you and you open up those upper centers and say, you know what? I don't have all the answers. Um, I need guidance. I need to connect to something beyond myself, right? And we bring that in and we connect and bring it to our heart and release it. Then we're allowing those issues. We're surrendering them to a higher power. And then we're taking a third breath, which is we're integrating those two energies together the, the lower three and the upper three, we're taking a breath in through our heart and a breath out through our heart. Yeah, and just allow yourself to, you know, with your hands on your heart, to feel the energy. And for our listeners who are doing this with us, just feel the energy of your own heartbeat for a moment, whether you're hearing it or feeling it. Awesome. And when you're doing that, you know, what, what the intention is, is coming to a realization that, oh my God, my heart's here, my heartbeat's here, my breath is here, my sigh, as I sigh out, I can hear my life force coming through me. It's like, no matter what's going on in my day, right, nobody can take this away from me. This is between me and God. And as you realize that you have your own, your own unique vibration, nobody else guy has the same frequency or the same vibration as you just felt in your heart. And this is, a, this is something that you can do during your day as a tool. You know, so if you're working with a lot of people during your day and your day started off with a great intention, but all of a sudden it feels like you've taken on other people's energy and, you know, we're starting to snowball into a, a not so pleasant day you have the ability to take five minutes and go through that three breath process and say, wow, okay, now I can feel me again, right? I can separate what's going on and what's other people's energy and mine. And that's a really, really powerful tool. Um, and so it's a way to, one of the things that I suggest, you know, for people who are looking to create a program where they're using music, sound and vibration, you know, uh, which is something I'd love to talk to you further about, is that that's a first step for me. When you can recognize the music within you, you have another completely appreciation for when you play music that mm -hmm. is, you know, your, your regular music, right? That's not your internal symphony, but, you know, the music that you listen to. And you can find a deep appreciation for that in a new way. Yeah, it's transformational. Like I, I have a similar practice daily by going into the heart, especially when I'm stressed. And I know I can become more addicted to my stressed moments and I don't want to go there because I'm kind of caught up in my thing. But as, right. as simple as it is, just stopping for five minutes and going within like that, it's so powerful. Like it's changed everything over the years. It really has changed the lens in which I look at life. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And again, if music's a language, right? And you stop to listen. This is how you stop to listen. You know, what's my heart trying to tell me right now? And it might be something about that situation where you get guidance. And you know what? In that five minutes, you might have really well got, well, you know what? I'm, I'm doing well monetarily with this job, but you know what? I, I know now I'm not supposed to be doing it, you know? Yeah. Or the other way around, you know, I'm not making much at this, but wow, I love this, this, project that i'm doing it feels awesome so i'm going to continue with that i got a yes with that yeah. so um for me it's either we feel really contracted when we're you know when we're experiencing something that we're looking for an answer on either we feel really like this like it's a freezing cold day right or we feel like this right where we're open to receive we feel expansive so whenever i'm looking for answers and i'm asking my heart for an answer i always ask myself does this feel contracted or does this feel expansive? 
Yeah, beautiful. I am. Um, I had a question drop in, and I want to. I want to bring it up because um, we quite often struggle of putting ourselves out there, of being judged, and you know, and we can kind of retain ourselves in our yeah. shells, right? Like it's it's a big deal. And and when you were talking earlier, I thought I kind of I must ask Barry that for some reason. But you you. You go into this zone, you come into, you pour your heart into some, to something, you create music, and then you set it out to the world. Do you personally get nervous by putting yourself out there like that? You know, open to, or, or you just, you know, you're just good with it all now, whatever it is it is. Well, you know, it's funny you asked that. I was having this conversation this morning with someone. Um, okay. Because when I first started out, you know, and I first started realizing that people were benefiting from what I was doing. You know, um, I was very concerned with how I would be viewed, you know, and my ego wouldn't even allow me to put my website, you know, on my CDs. Like it literally had no information on it. Someone, someone came up to me and said, you know, I've been using your music for the last year for anxiety, for sleeping, and you know, if I want to recommend it to a friend, I don't even know how they can get it. Your, your name's on it, but your web info isn't, there's no contact info on it. And at the time I was, I was reading this book that I came upon in a thrift store by a gentleman named Michael Berg. And uh, it, I think it was called, um, it was about, to, it was about the Kabbalah. Um, okay. And I, I forget the exact name of it. Um, but it was about God and the Kabbalah. And there was a passage in the book that really just hit me. And it's, it said was ego, had, they defined ego, was receiving for the self alone. So it was very profound for me. And, and what I was doing, right, at that point was I knew that people were being helped by my music, but I was limiting it to a few people and I was really receiving it for myself alone. You know, I was not, you know, going out there and saying, hey, this is a lot of people have had these experiences. I want to share this with you. And when that quote really hit me, and now I remember the name of the book is Becoming God okay. uh, by, by Michael Berg. Um, so there's a perfect example, right? I was trying to think of it. And then all of a sudden, suddenly it came in when I wasn't thinking about it. But um, when we really connect to that fact that we, we each have a gift here that we're that we have to share and if we know that that can help people you know and I, i'm not and don't be don't get this confused with it being over salesy you know because there's a difference mm. you know there's a difference in saying here's some testimonials from people who are using my music right and they're using it for sleeping challenge or they're using it um to for ad HD, or they're using it with their autistic child. Here are some testimonials of how they've used it, right? And if it resonates with you, and if my music resonates with you, and you're inspired by it, please pass it on to somebody else. And I, I'll even say that to your listeners. You know, if my music has inspired you, and you feel it can help, you know, 10 other people in your life, then please share it with them. And yeah, I'm going to be getting something in return for that. You know, I'm going to be getting a lot of things. I'm going to be getting the knowledge that, and the knowing and the gift that it's helping other people. But yeah, and I will be compensated for my work through that, which will allow me to do more work, right? It will allow me to get this out there in an even bigger way, create other projects, maybe create my nonprofit because that's going to take funding to do. See, and that's what I'm saying it all comes in. It's all about flow. Totally. And it's about keeping that creative energy going. So if you view money as something that's going to help your creative energy and help you expand your vision and help you help more people, then you don't think of it in a place of lack, you know, or you, and, and people buying it don't think of it in a place of lack. They're probably saying, wow, that'd be really cool. So he could start a nonprofit and maybe I could donate, you know, a thousand CDs a year in that, nonprofit to help people in hospice or help people birthing children into the world, then we become part of each other's story. You know, it doesn't become part of selling. It becomes part of, part of changing and transforming our world, you know? So that's, that's how the world needs it, Barry. 
The world needs it, you know, and I, I, I love giving my energy to uh, supporting other people and that are doing great things and helping people get out there because it all ripples in, you know, that's why I got this podcast, right? Like it's just, it's, it, for me, it, it makes no sense to do it any other way, um, you know, but, but we need a shift in our heart space first, I think, to be able to, to go there quite often. Yeah. It's, and it's like music, you know, it's like resonance, like where we started talking out, you know, something I'm saying is resonating mm. with people listening and it's resonating with you. You feel it, right? And when you feel that resonance, it's a combination of my resonance and your resonance now together, right? So it's like when you hit a tuning fork in a room with a piano at the note of E, even from across the room, right, that piano starts vibrating. The string on the piano starts vibrating without you even striking the note. And that's what resonance is. And that's what we're doing when, when, when I'm resonating with someone who, who understands what I'm talking about. They could be in another country like you are, right? Yeah. You're in Australia, I'm in Arizona, right? But we're creating a field between us because we're resonating with each other. And people tap into that field themselves and then they feel supported and they say you know what you know what i'm gonna move forward in in this it's a little bit scary right and it was scary for me when i first started doing this because i did not come from a family background of you know of of what we call the woo you know you know or things that you know we didn't understand you know so this type of music really wasn't supported and mm. music in general in my family was you know, I was raised in a, in a Jewish household. It was considered, they encouraged it, you know, but it was considered a nice hobby, right? But not something you did for a living. So I brought in my ancestral um, patterns of fear and I was carrying through with me as well that I was able to release in terms of moving to do this work. So I invite anyone, you know, listening that we all have something that we're here to share. And sometimes it's not about waiting for the right moment. You know, sometimes you are the right moment. You yeah. Know? And when you step into it and you say, you know what? The timing is not exactly right. It doesn't, you know, but you move forward. You're telling the universe that you have a trust. And in my experience, whenever I do that, I have always found that, and I, I don't mind using the word God. You know, I feel that God's walking with me, right? And on my path, when I take that first step, that's when the synchronicities align. It's always been there. All the synchronicities already align, but we have to move place to past the place of fear and into the unknown to get to all the good stuff. That's where all the gumbo is. Totally, totally. Yeah, I love it, Barry. Mate, I, another question for yeah. you. Um, let's say somebody's listening to this who is unwell and, and they've never even correlated to listening to music to, to be another vehicle to help them heal. And they, and they got you on the phone and they said, Barry, what do I do? Where do I start? Like, what, what, would, you, what would you say to them? With That's a great question. I love that question. Uh, because someone, someone uh, at a conference asked, pretty much had to ask me that and said, you know, I'm experiencing, I have anxiety attacks like all the time. My blood pressure is high. I'm always feeling like I'm on the verge of, of something negative happening to my health, what do you suggest? And so here's the starting point, and it's gonna sound really strange because most people are probably waiting for me to, to recommend the piece of music that I've composed, um, you know, or something that I've done. But I really think that the, the most powerful thing each person could do in creating their own unique music program. So that what we did with the heart song breathing process, that's a great step. And that's a great part for me, something to do in the morning, at the beginning of your day, or at the end of your day. But if you can find the one song that makes you happy, okay? And I call this your musical pinnacle. So this is a song that has defined a positive and a very, very elevated emotion from some point in your life. And so for me, I love the song by the Spinners, Could It Be I'm Falling In Love? Like I remember when I was about 10 years old, and this is like 70s music, right? I'm giving away my age. But all of my friends were part of a bowling league, right? And it was just all this camaraderie, and we were starting to like girls, and we were starting to date. And that song came on, and we all loved it. 
you know, and I, I just can still feel, you know, I can feel being 10 years old and feeling like, oh, I love this song and everyone loving that song, you know, and so when I hear that song, it brings me to a great place and I don't even have to listen to it. And the studies that show that even imagining a song that brings positive emotions to us can affect us the same way and affect our brain chemistry in the same way. So they call this autobiographical memories and music has the ability to create these autobiographical memories where when we're in them, our bodies start to intertwine with our internal pharmacy, right? And we start producing mm -hmm. things that have a positive effect on us. So when I'm listening to that song, all of a sudden my body starts producing dopamine, right? Which connects me, is a pleasure. Um, it, it allows me to, to know that I'm experiencing something pleasurable and it has a positive effect on my physical body. So when I said this to this young lady, um, she, I said, just close your eyes. Think about it for a second. What, you know, what song is your happy song? And I can see her just closing her eyes, right? And all of a sudden there was a point where she just started smiling. And I said, cool, great, keep listening. And she kept smiling. And I said, wow, you're hearing it, aren't you? And she says, well, yes, yes. I said, okay, great. Now I want you to take a mental snapshot of where you are right now. And then you can open your eyes. But I want you to really be with it, take a breath and take a mental snapshot. And so she did and she opened her eyes and she shared with me that her song was Green Sleeves, right? So for every person, it's, it's a completely different song. And she, I said, and now you know that you don't even need this song. You can move into that space where you're experiencing without even listening. But when you do listen, it's even more powerful. And you can plug that song anywhere into your day. Now, I would also suggest, you know, creating playlists. After you do that, and you know that you can achieve a, an altered state from only one song, then you realize that, wow, if I really tap into creating my own musical program, that what would happen if I created a playlist for joy, right? And now I have 10 songs that are taking me to a place of joy for an hour. What, what would that experience be? What would be going on in your body then? Or, you know, a, a playlist for relaxation. You know, uh, and then I would say, you know, yeah, tap into some of my ambiology series or cosmic consciousness or some of those pieces for those longer pieces. Or, you know, an inspirational or a motivational playlist where you don't want to relax. You want to be like spark, like Vangelis. And, you know, I have um, a series called Ignite the Heart that you've probably heard. Dr. Joe uses a lot of um, those songs for his active breathing where you're going through those centers and you know you're really you're initiating yourself in your physical body and your spiritual body through a breathing technique that he uses that's very powerful so i think that we can be using playlists to really target emotional states not just randomly hearing your favorite song on the radio but like having these playlists lined up so if you're a person who experiences depression you know that you have your playlist that is the opposite of that. And it really, uh, if you can ask yourself every day, guy, and tap into your heart again, where am I right now, right? Where am I in my, in my emotional state? Asking that question, where am I now? So where am I here, right? And where do I want to go? So I might be in a depressed state, but I want to go to an inspired state. Maybe I have a leadership meeting today. All right, that I need to be really like active and I need to be in high beta for, right? What's going to take me from there to here, right? So that's where music becomes that bridge. Mm. And if you can always view it, music as being a bridge for you, where am I now? Where do I want to go? And what piece of music is going to take me there? Then you're going to have an, be able to create an amazing music program for yourself. And it's, it's really that simple. You know, take inventory of all the music you have in your iTunes library, right? And start becoming the DJ of your own life, you know, putting them into playlists. And that's what DJs do, right? They know they're going to have an effect when they play a certain song, right? So you can become the DJ of your own life and you can take control of the driver's seat. So your musical 
powerful musical experiences are no longer random, but you are guiding that process. And that one song, that one song that you're listening to in college or when you're 30 or 40 years old now can become a lifeline to you. You know, if you have Alzheimer's when you're 70 or 80 years old or 90 years old, hopefully you never get it. But if you're ever at that space where you're moving into dementia or Alzheimer's, that one song can become a powerful vehicle for you connecting to your memories. And they're showing that in studies with Alzheimer's patients, you know, who they're creating their playlist of what their preferred music work was. And that's what this is, right? It's preferred music, music you like. And when they're playing it for them, right, they're reconnecting to memories. So they might ask them, you know, well, do you remember Christmas, Dad, when you were 40 years old? And, you know, there's a great video. Um, if you, if you um, put it in your search engine on YouTube, type in Alzheimer's and Henry and music. So Alzheimer's, Henry, music. Okay. And you'll see this video of this man who's literally like in a head down position and is not at all connected to, to um, his mental state. And they start playing him these songs because he loved music. And all of a sudden they're asking him these questions and he's answering them because when he heard a song that was related to Christmas, like White Christmas, or a song he remembers Count Basie and starts singing all of a sudden. So that one song for you can become a lifeline. Yeah. you know, later on in your life to creating what's called neuroplasticity, where what's going on in your brain is the certain path to your memories, right, cannot be communicated through traditional language. So someone asking to you doesn't give you access um, to those memories, but music is another language and it goes through another pathway, right? And it creates neuroplasticity where that music can connect us to that memory in a different way. And, you know, that's how powerful it is, music is. And now what's exciting is, guys, that we are able to show the research to the skeptics, you know, totally. out there and say what we've known for years, spiritually known for years, but we can provide the science behind it that shows why. Yeah. And, and it gives you your power back. Like you have the, the opportunity to use that bridge to change your state, to, to, like you say, create different emotions and evoke different biological responses within the body that's going to start to make you feel a different way in a better way, you know, and uh, it's certainly better than, 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 than wallowing in it and not trying to make any changes, you know, because then nothing exactly. changes. Exactly. And that's really the key. I'm, I'm sure a lot of your listeners have created programs, you know, they have meditative programs where they're doing meditation every day and they understand mm -hmm. how transformational that could be, or they've changed their diets and their nutrition and they've created a program where they're very aware of what they're putting into their physical body. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's the same with music. Like what are you putting in to your body musically? Yes. <laughs> what is, what's your musical nutrition, right? What's feeding your soul when you listen to it? Right, and why aren't you creating a program for your music? So every day you're doing something, you know, where you're you're empowering yourself, and you're saying, "Wow, music is as powerful as meditation," or I combine it with meditation, or it's as powerful as any other modality out there. You know, it's, it's as powerful as reading, you know, a book that changed your life. Music can do that in five minutes. Yeah, totally. And you got instant access to it. Boom. Do you think, do you think I'm passionate about it? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Mate, I'm aware of the time, so I'm going to ask you some questions I ask everyone on okay. the show. And uh, okay. the first one is, what's been a low point in your life you've had, but later in life it turned out to be a blessing? Um, well, I think, you know, I think it was like up and coming through music. You know, and I was in New York and I was, I was producing like house music. I was doing hip hop music. I was doing a lot of things. So paying my dues, right, and really sticking with it regardless of what the economics of going on was, were challenging at times. You know, there were times when I was rolling up change and quarters and pennies to, you know, to buy, you know, to buy and nourish myself for the week, you know, and 
just sticking with it regardless of what anybody else was saying, you know, and knowing that this was a path for me. And, you know, that broke through for me when, um, you know, when I, when I started doing this kind of music and I had what I call my awakening, that there was gonna be something bigger and I knew that I was gonna be supported um, financially, you know, as well. And I also, you know, having the blessing of working with people like Les Paul, who wow. um, you know, I have the gift of co-producing a Grammy award-winning track with the person who invented the electric guitar, you know? Amazing. And I, I've been blessed to be aligned with innovators, you know, like Wayne Dyer and Dr. Joe Dispenza and, you know, uh, and Greg Braden and Anita Morjani and, you know, just people with powerful messages who, who embraced my gift, you know, and saw it and, um, you know, and we believed in each other, you know, to co-create together. Uh, so that's really where I think the power, the low point and the high points. I think I'm still in the high points. You know, I think, you know, the word retirement doesn't really exist for me. So, yeah. And it shouldn't. <laughs> I'm just starting to yeah. have fun. Exactly. Exactly. Um, if you could have dinner with anyone tonight from anywhere in the world at any time frame, who do you think it would be and why? Well, I, I must say, I always have dinner with my wife who's amazing. Uh, and she's a, she is um, a, a healer in her own right. She's a naturopathic medical doctor, Dr. Denise Warden. I'll give her a plug because she's <laughs> awesome. And my dog, Woody, which is, you know, he, he's just amazing and teaches me lessons every day. Um, but if I had to sit down with, with one, wow, with one person, um, you know, and this is gonna sound odd to a lot of people, but one of my biggest influences in music was Bruce Springsteen. And um, I think he is an amazing um, songwriter. I think he's an amazing spirit. And he doesn't talk a lot about his spirituality. He doesn't really wear it on his sleeve, you know, but you can always tell that he's having a spiritual experience when he's performing, you know, his eyes are fluttering and, and I would love to talk to him about the healing and spiritual aspects of music wow. and um, seeing how how he utilizes them yeah awesome that would be awesome yeah. um be awesome. what have you what what have you got coming up barry i know you mentioned uh, off air as well tuscany and um can you tell us a little bit about that that's coming up yeah yeah so i am doing a retreat um, from october 12th to the 19th with Global Journeys, it's global, the letter J dot org. And we are, it's called the Sound Healing Adventure in Tuscany. So it's for six days. And we're really going to move into, into co-creating together because a lot of people who are doing spiritual work out there and they're doing things already. And I think no matter where you are on your spiritual path, that this is a journey that can assist you because I think what music does it's all about fine tuning. And that's really where I'm excited to take people to, where I feel I'm an expert in doing that, is tweaking what you're doing. What can you do? A little minute change, it's like tuning a radio station, right? And you don't quite land on that channel. What can you tweak to get that perfect reception where you're connected to that creative energy you need to move into whatever it is you wanna do? And we're gonna be doing that through sound healing circles, uh, with tuning forks, through uh, toning and identifying where you're holding blocks in your physical body. We are going to be taking these amazing, amazing journeys outside of the musical parts of it and uh, uh, outside of the um, research. I'm going to be providing the latest musical research as well and the science behind what we're doing. We're then going to be taking it in the field, which is awesome. We're going to check out live Gregorian chanting, which is um, going to happen in Tuscany. You know, we're going to do go through a wine tour. We're going to be going through a chocolate tour as well. So I, I feel you need lots of time to integrate powerful moments. And so we're going to leave plenty of time for people to do that in one of the most amazing regions. We're going to be going to Assisi, which is considered one of the most spiritually high vibrational places on the wow. uh, planet. We're doing a classical concert. So we're going to be doing um, some amazing things in a six-day um, process and it's still going on. It's a small group of people. So if it's something you're interested in, uh, go to globalj.org. Only 30 people are going to be on the tour. 
I want to keep it intimate so it's a safe space for people to experience, um, you know, the breakthroughs and transformation on the journey. So that's um, one of the events I'm doing. Um, I have a new release coming out with Monroe Institute that um, oh, wow. yeah, is part of um, an inspirational journey I did with Anita Morjani, okay. where she did a guided meditation. We're taking that music where people had these powerful experiences and applying hemi-sync with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm in the process of doing a project, more projects with Dr. Joe and Greg Braden, Colette Baron reed We were talking about Lee Harris. We're doing, uh, he does amazing work. We're doing a new CD together. So lots of um, new things, new things and adventures on the rise. It sounds like a really rough time ahead with all that, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible, man. It's terrible. <laughs> I've never been to Tuscany. I've heard it's phenomenal. Like it's just. Well, we would love to have you. You know. So. Yeah. What were the dates again, Barry? Happen. What were the dates okay. again? Um, October twelfth to the nineteenth, twenty nineteen, and um, it's also a beautiful time of year as well. It's going to be autumn, autumn there, and um, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, and I know the guys from Global Journeys it came, Frank, and they're beautiful people. Like it'll just be. Franco amazing. and Kay are amazing, and. Yeah. They, they make sure that all the details are taken care of, amazing meals, you know, uh, amazing journeys, all the details are taken care of so you don't have to. Um, and that's another important part of, you know, when you take a healing journey, totally. you don't have to worry about where your meals are coming from. You know, mm -hmm. you want to uh, be able to explore a little bit, but all of the restaurants are very, very high end and are, are very like wonderful Italian food, you know, so yeah absolutely mate and uh, last question for you today with everything we've covered on the podcast what message would you like to leave for our listeners to ponder on um i mean i want people to understand and know how powerful they are as their own sound healers you know and as i said tapping into that inner symphony that goes on within them that we all have the power to use sound to heal you know, it doesn't, you don't have to necessarily be a crystal ball player or someone who uses tuning fork or someone who has a beautiful voice to have transformational experiences. And as soon as you understand that you are a sound healer, then you can see what resonates with you outside of that. You can listen to a crystal ball album or someone, you know, a chanting album and say, wow, I really love this. This resonates with me. So understand that you have the power to make your own decisions of what's going to work with you musically and to trust your intuition of what feels good to you, regardless of what other people are recommending or whatever they say, they don't know you, you know, and only you can know what's going to be um, a sound healing experience for yourself. Yeah. Amen to that, man. Um, if people want to check out your music, check out your work. I know you've got a book, everything. Where's the best place to send them back to Barry? Well, my website, barrygoldsteinmusic.com is easy to find me. Uh, my book is on Amazon. Uh, my CDs are on Amazon. My CDs are on iTunes. Um, you know, it's easily found them. Also, Dr. Joe distributes, Dr. Joe Dispenser.com distributes a lot of my music as well. Anywhere they want to find it, you know, they'll be able to listen to it. And, you know, if people have any questions of, you know, from this interview and they'd like to reach out to me, they could do that as well um, at info at barrygoldsteinmusic.com. And I want to invite people to support Guy and his amazing work that he's doing. And he's gone out there on his own to, um, to create this new podcast, right, that you're, that you're doing. And uh, I think they're amazing and they're helping a lot of people. So support his work and share these videos uh, with people. And he's not charging anything for them. You know, they're, uh, they're available to you. And, you know, he's all about creating change on this planet. So yeah, thank you, Barry. Appreciate it, man. And thank you for your time today. I loved every minute of that interview. And I have no doubt people will be inspired by that. So thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And um, I look forward to sharing it with people. Cheers, buddy. Thanks.